friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for an updated video on milk and long-term food storage. So I'm going to be talking about both dairy-free milks and dairy milks and the various different ways that you can put up and types of milk that you can put up for your long-term food storage. So I want to start this video off with the vegan methods and then I'll go on and talk about the dairy options. So if you're vegan or dairy free, one option is, is you can find powdered milks. And though I've never tried to make any myself, I'll go ahead and link to some down below. Just make sure that when you're looking into any of that kind of stuff, that you're reading the ingredients to know exactly what's in them. Because when it comes to any kind of powdered milks or box milks, a lot of times there's things added to that that might not be something you will want in your diet, especially if you're sensitive to various things. So I have bought some powdered coconut milk to try to experiment with to see if that would work good for making a white chocolate but it did have one ingredient in it that is one of those controversial ones and I believe that one was the maltodextrin. It can be made organically but it is highly processed no matter what it is they're making it from. So just look into that closely and consider your different health issues, gut issues and stuff that you might be dealing with. And then you also have the option of the boxed milks, just like with the Gosner whole milk, this is cow milk, you can get all kinds, I'm sure, of boxed milks of different types of nuts. But you're looking at the same thing there. Now I do think that most of the boxed nut milks now have been discontinuing the use of carrageenan, which can be very, very tough on the gut. Yes, it's natural, but it is not something that should be eaten. It should not be taken internally. and Otherwise, it can really tear up your gut. So because of that, a lot of companies have stopped using that. But double check that and then read all the other ingredients. Now, I haven't bought any kind of boxed milks other than the cow milk in years, so I don't really know what all's out there. But what I recommend to be the absolute best method when you're talking about putting up things for long term for having your nut milk available is simply storing up nuts. Nuts will keep for many years, especially if you vacuum seal them into jars. But even if you don't vacuum seal them, if you repackage them into jars or even leave them in the plastic bags they came in, they will keep for years that way. And so I do like to repackage mine into jars but making your own nut milks is so easy and then you can make it as you need it, a quart at a time and mix it up, make any kind of variety. So I have all kinds of nut milk videos out there and seed even. I have one in coconut milk, hemp seed milk. Uh, I think I have, a, I have a pecan cashew. I have Brazil nut and date. I have Brazil nut and, and hazelnut. And then I have one on just almond milk. There's many out there. And there's I also have recipes on how you can take that nut milk and use it for other things such as making a vegan fettuccine, even making a vegan pudding and cheese and various other things. So I will put that whole playlist down below so you can go in there and look through the various videos to find the one that might interest you. But that's one of the reasons I stock up on a lot of nuts. Even though I'm no longer vegan and haven't been for years, I do still occasionally really like to make nut milk because I just like the flavor a lot of, of certain types, especially the pecan cashew and the Brazil nut. A couple of my very favorites, tiger nut, that's another one. It's not a nut at all. It's actually a tuber, but that makes a very delicious milk that tastes quite a bit like coconut, but a little bit different. There's so many different types of dairy-free milks that you can make. So just find what your favorite is and then stock up on those. I would think the tiger nuts would probably last even longer than your nuts for food storage as far as that goes. But you know, it's all about taste and what your body needs most. For example, if you've got a low functioning thyroid, Brazil nuts are an excellent choice. So because they're high in selenium, which is really good for the thyroid and keeps it functioning properly, gives it a good boost like it needs, especially if it's on the lower end. So really, when it comes to the vegan choice, this is this would be what I would do. But again, you can still look into the powdered and boxed 
versions. If that might be easier for you, just don't forget to read those ingredients. Okay, now let's talk about some dairy milk. Now, in my original video, uh, back when I shot that one, I was still getting goat milk from a friend, and we were getting lots of goat milk. She was actually uh, just generous enough to give us about a gallon to two gallons every week, and oftentimes, uh, there's no way we could work through that much in a week and so what I was doing was freezing it up into mason jars so if you have goats or cows and it, here's I'm going to give you a couple of options of ways that you can preserve your the, your fresh milk from your own animals and freezing is an excellent way especially if you want to keep it in its raw form but when it comes to freezing there's some steps you really want to take never freeze in any jar larger than a quart quart is the biggest you want to go the smaller the jar the stronger it is when it comes to freezing and though i do have a video out on how to freeze in mason jars i'm going to go ahead and cover all this right here so when i was freezing the goat milk in the jars i would only fill the jars up to about here just to that point before the it starts to taper in on the jar and leaving leaving plenty of space for expansion and then you do not want to put your lid and your band on when you go to freeze it not right away put your lid on what I do is I, I put the lid on and I just let it set there and that's just to keep anything out of it anything that could possibly fall in there while it's freezing and then once it is frozen I then it's fully frozen I then will go and add the band and I don't tighten it wrench it down really tight I just put it on there until it just stops moving. Kind of like the tightness you would want if you're using like a harvest guard or a tattler lid, just so it's on there well, but not wrenched down tightly. You definitely don't want to do that. The other step you want to take, and this was a lesson I learned because I lost probably about three quarts of goat milk because I didn't take the extra step of wrapping the jars before putting them into the freezer thinking they would be totally safe, but not thinking about the fact that I was putting them in a movable shelf. So I'd go move that shelf, those those very brittle, because they're frozen, that glass is gonna become brittle, jars would, would knock against each other and I cracked at least three of my jars. So then I started going the extra step and there's very many different things you can use. Yes, you can take the time to crochet or knit little covers to go over your jars if you have that kind of time. I would rather save my crocheting time to make stuff for my store or for my grandbaby. Or you can use your old socks that have got holes in them and you can just pull the, the sock over that if it's big enough to fit. I know none of mine would be fit big enough to fit over a quart jar anyway. Or you can just simply take a chunk of material, I prefer flannel in this case, and I'll explain why in a minute, and I, I double it over, so this is folded in half lengthwise, and I just find old flannel sheets at garage sales for really cheap, and I, I buy them whenever I see them, no matter what they look like, as long as they're a, they're a good thick flannel, and then these are the kind of things I use them for. And then I just simply wrap the fabric around the jar like that and then I rip off another chunk I don't even cut any of this I just rip it into the links that I want and then I just rip off another narrow piece to use as a tie and to me that's a quick and simple method now it's not quite as quick as using an old sock or a pre-made cover that you could slip over it but it's a lot quicker than having to make those things yourself. And so this is what I do and that way they stay very well protected in there so if things get jostled around at all and those jars kind of bump each other, that's gonna keep them from cracking and it's, this has been very successful. Now the other great benefit of having your jars, no matter what you have in them, because I have zucchini and berries from the garden and, and snow peas all frozen into jars in my freezer. And another benefit to having them wrapped like this is that not only will it keep them safe from cracking, if you lose your power or your freezer goes out by having these things wrapped, it's gonna keep them insulated as well. And I learned, I figured this out when I had pulled two different 
things out of my freezer and the I had one jar that I had unwrapped right away and the other one I left wrapped because I simply forgot to unwrap it and I was letting them both thaw and the one that stayed wrapped even though it was right real close to the the wood stove and the one that was unwrapped was in here where it's cooler the one that was near the wood stove stayed frozen longer than the one in here did so that showed me right there because I was able to make that comparison between the two and how well having this double layered flannel on the jar not only pads it but also insulates it. And this is also why I like flannel because it's going to be thicker than certain other fabrics. So it just works really good for this purpose. And then obviously if you have dairy animals, the other method for storing your milk for long term is to can it. Yes, you can can your milk it's people do it all the time it just seems like every day there's more and more rules coming about out about what you should not do but i have a friend who cans her goat milk now i've never done it so don't ask me how i would say go look it up or look for channels that are already doing that that can show you how to can your own milk okay now we're going to move on to talking about stocking up on milks for those of us who do not have dairy animals but even if you do you may still want to have other forms of backup milk available but one of these i'm going to talk about this first because i got to get this back in the freezer but since we're not getting the, the goat milk anymore from our friend it's it's simply because she had to get rid of her goats and i haven't been able to find a good reliable source for local raw milk goat or cow and so what we do is we stock up on organic whole milk at Costco and then we freeze it. So one of the things I prefer about this, yes, you can freeze in those plastic gallons, but I much prefer freezing in this. One, because it's not plastic, and two, because they're smaller, it doesn't take near as long in the half gallons to thaw them out. So we just try to think ahead of time and pull them out as needed. And so as far as fresh milk goes, that is what we do. Okay, then the other one that I like that it is nice to have on hand if I forget to pull the milk out of the freezer and I just need something right away is the boxed Gosner milk. Again, I only buy whole milk. I never go with any kind of defatted milk. You're going to be a lot healthier going with the whole milk, by the way. Not something that's had the fat removed and then fat put back in. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute with a popular brand that a lot of people really like. So anyway, the Gosner is a good option. Just keep in mind because it is a box milk, this one is ultra pasteurized as well. So my main purpose of having the Gosner milk on hand is for the ease of use because it's there. I don't have time to mix up a powdered milk. I don't have time to thaw out my frozen milk. It's right there. And it's also another backup milk for food storage for long term. And you're gonna, I know a lot of you are gonna ask me, how long will all this stuff store? Well, I can't tell you for certain, but I feel pretty sure that the Gosner milk lasts for at least a minimum of two years. Don't go by the expirations on packages. They have to put those, but the but usually when it comes to your powdered milks or any of this kind of stuff, canned foods, the expiration is long past the actual date they put on the package. And so the Gosner milk, I think on the package, it says, you know, I'll have an, like this one has an expiration date of, September 2020. So, so it's already past this expiration date. But you know what? I'm not afraid of that. I'm absolutely not afraid of that. However, I do still cycle through the milk. And as you can see in this picture, you can see how I've got it all in rows. And above the row that I'm currently wor working through, I have a little arrow taped up there. Now I'll work through that row and once I'm finished with that row then I'll buy enough milk to restock that row and then move on to the next one. This is the same thing I'm doing with my coffee now as well, my coffee beans. And then I just move that arrow over and that makes it easy. Initially I was rotating everything. Now I just do it this way because I don't have to go through all the work of rotating all the boxes. I just work through a row at a time and that works out so much easier for me doing it that way okay so now let's talk about the three different powdered milks i have here so my what my favorite for flavor is the hoosier hill farm whole milk powder and then my second for both value and flavor the, this one now they, they tend to go back and forth one tends to get higher than the other but they stay relatively pretty close to each other so my other favorite is the judy's whole milk powder and both of these are supposed to be hormone free which is an important thing to me there then the other one is the Meyerberg 
goat milk powder. So I had this since 2012, I think. I bought a couple of cases of it. Uh, outside of the box, it says expiration 2017. Well, I recently had opened up a can just to see how it was. It still tasted good as the very first can I tried as soon as I bought that can. So yes, it will last forever as long as it stays sealed. And then even then, even once you open it, as long as you keep it in an airtight container, it's still going to stay good for a very, very long time. Now let me talk a little bit about these particular milks and why I like these over this popular brand right here that a lot of people have been talking about lately. And some people will say it's the most, it's the superb, it's the high, it's the highest quality, and so on and so forth. Now that might be true if it comes to flavor. I don't know. I have never tried it. But because so many people kept talking about that milk, I thought, oh, I'm going to check it out. People are talking about how good it is. Well, this is, the, this is the thing that some people forget to do. All these milks here, they're nothing but milk. That's all that's in these is powdered milk. There's no added ingredients. But when you look at that particular popular brand, there's a lot of added ingredients to that. And it depends on which one you're buying. In fact, the one that's supposed to be tailored specifically for kids has even more added ingredients than just the standard one. What they do is they actually strip all the natural fats out of the milk, then they add fats back in. And none of them are la labeled as organic and non-GMO. So what that means, especially when you're talking soy and corn, if they're not otherwise labeled, they are GMO. So if you're trying to avoid uh, GMOs, I don't recommend going with that. So this is why I I like these particular ones. You know, the, they don't have the growth hormones and they're just milk. That's all they are. Now I have bought the cheese, the Hoosier Hill, and I've talked about this before, their cheese powder. And that one, and this is what you're gonna get when you're talking about any kind of dried cheeses most of the time. Unless you're getting a, a freeze-dried grated cheese, cheese powders always have added ingredients that you should watch out for and even the white cheddar one i bought that one because it had the less than the the orange one but even then it still had the citric acid in it and if you're curious about the citric acid and why that would be a bad thing i did do a video about that so when it comes to that yes i like having the cheese powder in my food storage as just something to add flavor it, you know, especially if you're thinking food fatigue, but it's something I would really want to limit my use of because of the ingredients that's in it. But when it comes to any of my other dairy powders, such as the heavy cream or the real butter powder and the buttermilk, that's all that's in them is just the milk solids. And so I feel safe using these. And as you can see, I've got some still in the package. And these are ones like this is heavy cream, these two are butter, and this one's buttermilk. And I'm going to be, I've only recently got into using the buttermilk powder again. And so this is the one I'm working through. You can see a little scoop in there. And so this is all I have right now, but I've decided since I've started using this, I'm really happy with it and I'm going to be stocking up on more of this as well. So I'll put a link to, to their store down below so you can check out their products. Even though most of them are just that and don't have any ad added ingredients that you may not want, just like with the cheese powder, check all of them. The sour cream's the same way, the cream cheese, and I haven't tried the cream cheese or the sour cream powder. In fact, I was reading reviews on the sour cream powder and a lot of people didn't like it. So, and I just don't really have a lot of use for sour cream anyway, so it's just not a, it's just not important to me. So again, when it comes to what you're going to put away for long term storage, Think about what your dietary needs are and don't forget to read the ingredients when you're talking powdered milks or box milks, whether they be true dairy milks or vegan milks. Always make sure you're checking that stuff. It might, some of these things might not be an issue for you. They might not cause any health problems, but you also have to realize that there's a lot of the different food ingredients. When we're eating those on a consistent basis it can take years for any kind of health problems to show up and that's why you have to continue to be very careful especially when you're talking about anything you're giving to kids all right well that's it i hope i think i covered everything i meant to cover don't forget to read the comment section because not only do a lot of people add really valuable information in there i also will add any information that i forgot to add in the video or 
worded incorrectly in the video and didn't even catch it in editing. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.